Carol this morning. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my thesis work, uh, which is models and algorithms for page rank sensitivity. So we're going to start with a brief outline. I know that many, many people in the room know a lot about page rank material, and there are many, many in the room, or that there are a few in the room who perhaps have never ever seen page, page, page rank before. So I'm actually going to start with a somewhat leisurely introduction to page, page, page rank, although uh, we'll quickly ramp up after that. Um, so first of all, I'm going to talk about how I got started on looking at sensitivity, and this is uh, some work I originally did with uh, Gene. Then I'll talk about our ideas for random sensitivity, what I mean by, 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 by that particular topic, and how we're going to uh, look at it, and how I think it's, a, it, it's actually so, sort of a nice way to look at the, pro at the pay, pay, pay drag problem. Um, hopefully, we get around to talking about the inner outer iteration that uh, Hen Greif uh, originally developed, and then we've done a lot of work on it subsequently. And then we'll follow with a quick uh, summary. So, as I said, hopefully, I'd like to encourage you to ask questions as we go, go, go along here. I've given a, a, a slight demo talk, and sometimes we get to that, and sometimes we don't. So, <laughs> we'll see what happens on this one. Um, so, as Michael said, I've been here for five years now, and as I was preparing this talk, I thought it'd be fun just to uh, look back and sort of see what the world, at least from the perspective of perhaps a uh, PhD student working in a somewhat computational realm who sits at his computer, uh, for roughly eight hours a day, sort of looking. <laughs> uh, well, in 2004, uh, Firefox 1.0 was released in November of that year, uh, and I understand that Firefox 3.5 is about to be released in the near future here. I don't know when precisely it's going to be released, but supposedly by June or July or something like that. In 2004, I wouldn't have exactly called Wikipedia, Facebook, or Gmail household words, uh, although now I think most households would know what we mean by that. I believe they're used almost every day on CNN. Uh, so now in addition to Wikipedia, Facebook, G and G, G uh, mail, you also have to consider YouTube, or YouTube Hulu, Hulu, Flickr, Twitter, and Google Maps. So it's sort of expanded as far as what we look at as these uh, toys we play, 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 play with on the internet. In 2004, Yahoo was going strong in 2009. Well, Yahoo is still going fairly strong, although there are sort of persistent rumors about acquisitions. What is Yahoo go, going to do? So perhaps not quite as strong as they might like, uh, but I hope they can slog it out. Uh, in 2004, we had three gigahertz <coughs> CPUs. In 2009, we still have three gigahertz <laughs> CPUs, except now we have four of them instead of just one in our computers. Uh, and I, I, people in the room used Google in 2004, and we still still uh, use Google this afternoon or today. Okay, so let's uh, get into PageRank a little bit. So um, whenever I tell people I'm working on PageRank, almost the first question that everyone asks is, are you going to develop a competitor to Google? <laughs> now, unfortunately, this is where I then have to say, well, no, not really. Uh, so what I'm going to, to uh, do is sort of outline a, a sort of cartoon picture of a search engine and where my contribution fits in with that to sort of motivate that I'm probably not going to be developing a competitor to, uh, to uh, Google. So what does a search engine look like? Well, so a search engine needs to first of all, so and, and, th and this is a web search, sur sur search engine here. A web search engine needs to, first of all, go out and get web pages to return, turn on results. So that's step one, you know, that's crawling web, web sites. So that's a fairly intricate pr pr procedure already, because you have to envision writing a, some, something that goes out and basically downloads everything on the web. Sounds a little bit chal 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 challenging there. Then you have to figure out, well, I've got all these web pages, what the heck do I do, do uh, with them? So this, 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 this would be building some sort of inverted index that allows you to take a word and look up what pages it occurs on, and maybe do, do uh, some other analysis to try and figure out maybe which are the most important words on that page, or which, which uh, things might be uh, the, the uh, most important. Then you want to try and figure out which pages are the most important ones out there on the web. And one way of doing that is to analyze links between uh, pages that pe people uh, visit. So once you've got the, this uh, text information and the link and the uh, link link information, then you need to sort of figure out how people would rank pa pa 
uh, uh, page, uh, page, pages on the web. And one way of doing this would be to get humans to, to, to evaluate rankings or infer rankings from how people click on the web and then fit your, your uh, measures here to how people sort of evaluate or would want to uh, see, see uh, these, these things done. Then you need to figure out a way of uh, producing these uh, rankings in something like 200 milliseconds, I believe, is, is, is uh, Google's response time uh, now. And then by the time you've done all of these things, the web has probably changed a little bit. CNN has a new head, head, headline out there, and then you need to update everything. So this is a pretty intricate pro, pro, procedure here. And you could probably write maybe one or more PhD theses on all of these topics here. Uh, as I hope you may have ascertained from the bold here, my con <laughs> contribution is really in analyzing the uh, web page link. So what I'll talk about now is one way of doing that. Uh, so we'll start by starting roughly at the uh, beginning and looking at how pages, uh, so how we sort of look at this link analysis problem. What I've done here is gathered together three pages from Wikipedia and uh, they're pages that uh, are about glyph syndrome, which is something that the other glyph in the room uh, has done a lot more work on than I have. <laughs> the other glyph being that one over there. Uh, so glyph syndrome is a page on Wikipedia that links to a page on, 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 on Wikipedia called eosinophilia. And e e e e eosinophilia links back to glyph Syndrome. So clearly these pages have something to do with each other. Uh, both of these uh, pages have links to a page on hyper e eosinophilic syndrome, uh, which sort of says that these two things somehow have, have, have something to uh, do, do, do with hyper eosinophilic syndrome. Now, there's a lot of information on the, these, these pa uh, uh, pages here, but when we do link analysis, we sort of ignore, ignore all, 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 a lot of that and just look at this mathematical structure here called a graph. And what a graph is, is it sort of takes this uh, set of linking ra, 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 relationships, ignores everything on the uh, page, and then just looks at three things that link to, to uh, each other in this, in, in, in this uh, particular way. Okay, so if you envision do, 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 doing this on the web, you get an absolutely gigantic graph. So last I heard, Google knew about something like a trillion different web pa 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 pages out there. So instead of there being three things, there would be a trillion. Uh, so it's, you know, this is a nice uh, picture to sort of motivate yourself, but there's a really big graph out there that people might uh, look at. Okay, now what does Google do with this graph? So what Google, well, so I'm going to talk about what the page rank model is, and there's a couple of different ways of understanding the pay, pay, page rank, rank model. The one that I actually like uh, the most is what's called the random surfer interpretation of the uh, uh, model. And what the random surfer interpretation is, is imagine someone clicking around the web. Well, if you envision someone sitting at a web page, say four here, what can they do? Well, they can click on a link on page uh, four, and they can get to pages two, three, or five, or they can do so. so this is the uh, model. Uh, and the way the model works like this is you simply say, okay, with probability alpha, people are going to click on a link on a page and follow an outlink from that page completely at random. Uh, and then with probability one minus alpha, what they're going to uh, do is they're gonna jump somewhere else in the graph at random. So they're going to do uh, uh, something else and arrive at a completely different page, page, page on the web. And the page rank model says, okay, envision this process running out to infinity time. And then look at where this surfer is spending most of his time. Places the surfer is spending most of his time are going to be the important pages up on, on, on the uh, web. So this is what you get if you sort of look at the random surfer model of page rank. Of course, at some point we need to move to uh, mathematics. So this is how we look at the page, page, page rank problem mathematically. So what happens is we make columns to cash to, uh, uh, We look at page four here, here, here again. Remember it linked pages two, three, and five. 
So that means we go over to col column four and say that the surfer will transition to pages two, three, and five, so the second, third, and fifth, fifth uh, rows with a probability of third each. So this is how we mathematically model all of these tran tran transitions between uh, pages. Um, if you happen to have a, prob a probability background, you're probably ready to shoot me now because I think this is a column stochastic matrix, whereas probabilists uh, would much rather see row stochastic matrices. Um, this is because my background is in linear algebra where we like column vectors instead of row vectors. Um, and rather than throwing transposes all over the place in my slides, I decided to just take the world and shift it by 90 degrees and sort of flip everything um, and avoid the uh, transpose symbols that sort of jump up everywhere. Uh, so what do we do with this thing I had called the jump before? Well, we just say you're going to move to every single page uniformly at random. So this is just a completely uniform vector. Um, nothing I'm going to talk about is restricted to just just, just out looking at that. It's just the uh, simplest case. Okay, it turns out that what I've described so far is a mathematical structure known as the Markov chain. This is great when we can say things things that like this because people have looked at Markov chains for over a hundred years. So we know a lot about them at this point. There's still open questions in Markov chains, so you know, it's an active research area too. But it turns out that this happens to be a particularly simple Markov chain. Um, it satisfies every property uh, a Markov, you, you uh, might want a Markov chain to uh, uh, satisfy. So one thing we know is that if we take that process and envision running out to uh, in, 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 in infinity, the amount of time people are spending on a web page, or sort of the probability of finding that random surfer on a web page, is actually a well-defined quantity. Um, so what this looks like as a Markov chain is with probability alpha, we take a jump according to, to, to the uh, length, and with probability one minus alpha, we do, uh, do uh, this random jump. Okay, so once we know that this is a Markov chain, we can sort of be a little bit clever at this point and say, well, we know this x is u, u uh, unique, and Markov chains are, so, so sorry, I, I should say that when you write a problem like this, this is an eigenvector problem, and eigenvector problems are nice, we know how to solve them, uh, but there's a sort of simpler problem we can look at too, which is a linear system problem. So once we know that x is unique, we can find the x and sort of look at a, a different model of page rank, where x, x is actually our page, 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 page rank vector. Um, so when I say page rank in the rest of the talk, I will actually mean solving this linear system here. Uh, the, the Eigen system and the Markov chain are nice for motivation, but I really like computing with this guy's, and the answers are, are the same on both of these uh, problems. For those of you who know a little bit more about page rank, what I haven't said is what happens when a page doesn't link to anyone on the web? What happens then? Where, 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 where does our surfer go? Well, in that case, what, 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 what we're going to do is just always make the uh, surfer jump from those pages. Okay, so I've described page rank so far from the point of looking at this from web search. Now it turns out that page rank can do a little bit more than just look at web search too. There's another uh, method that people look at which is called gene rank where you take the page rank idea and apply it to a problem you get when you're looking at microarray data. So when you're looking at micro row array data, this is sort of a picture of what you get. You get you get out these heat maps on your micro array experiment. And typically you're looking at genes on one side and experimental conditions on the other. And you're trying to ascertain some information about that. Now these these actual measurements that sit in these cells here can sometimes be a little bit noisy. And one thing that people have looked at doing is looked for ways of saying, well, okay, suppose the, these, these are noisy. I might not want to look at the genes in order of their expression level, I, the raw micro array scores. I might want to look at some other information in there too. So what they said is, okay, well, we know that a lot of people have spent time anal or, uh, an analyzing relationships between genes, and so we can encode these as a graph. So this is a graph where two genes are connected by some sort of functional relationship or some sort of relationship identified by uh, humans. And what you do is you take your expression levels from uh, your microarray experiment and look at predicting what genes you might be missing by solving a particular pa 
pay drink problem. So what you're getting out in this case is, suppose our microarray happened to miss a gene that's really close to everyone else in our experiment. This would allow you to identify this. And this is a model proposed by uh, some people in, in uh, Scotland. They do all sorts of experiments to show that pay drink actually does pretty well in this pro problem too. There's a related uh, problem called, or a, a related algorithm called protein rank, which effectively does the exact same thing, except it does it on proteins instead of genes. There's an algorithm called isorank. Um, isorank is an algorithm proposed, or, uh, proposed to solve what's called a network alignment problem. And if you'll uh, wait a little bit, I'll explain. Oh, I might have time to explain a little bit more about that one. People have used page rank ideas quite effectively uh, to do graph clustering or graph partitioning. It turns out there's all sorts of very nice relationships you can draw between what you're doing in page rank and what you would want to be doing in clustering. Uh, a fun little use of page rank is you can use page rank to predict uh, sort of a ranking of NFL teams. So if you remember how I described the random surfer as randomly hopping between web pages, well, you can envision a, uh, a fair weather sports fan that sort of <coughs> randomly moves between following different sports teams based on their statistics, whether or not they win or lose, uh, and maybe the weather the day they're playing the games, all sorts of fun stuff you can put in, in uh, that one. And what you get out is the probability that you're following a particular sports team at a given, or so, uh, 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 sort of overall time, and then you can say, well, the team that most people are following or are following most often is probably the best team. So it's kind of a, a cool, cool uh, use there. So finally, I actually really like pay, pay, pay drink sort of a model teaching pro problem too, because it turns out it's pretty simple to uh, state if you've got a background in uh, linear algebra or, pro or probability theory. Um, you can sort of introduce it quickly, but it's sort of rich in all sorts of other structure too. You can take it and actually work with it out um, and, and, and do some pretty interesting things, things uh, with it. So it's, I, I think it's sort of interesting as a, as a model problem. Okay, um, so I said I, uh, so what I've described so far is just how I sort of got started working on things. I've worked on a couple other things over my time here at Stanford too. Uh, I, I originally cut my teeth on PageRank uh, working at Yahoo, Re or, uh, Yahoo Research Labs and Intel Research, and unfortunately I don't have enough time to go into these projects in detail, but I'm just going to highlight a couple things. Um, so I, at, as I said, I sort of worked initially at Yahoo and, and Intel uh, on some PageRank pay, pay things. Uh, Paul and I took a lot of the ideas we had sort of worked on as an outgrowth from this stuff, and that has actually been incorporated into a, a lot of his uh, 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 thesis, and that's looking at a parameterized linear system that looks looks like this. As I mentioned before, uh, there's this network alignment pro problem that Amin and I and Ying in the back uh, have worked on for, for, for a while. So, uh, I hope the picture here here is sort of clear. You want to take two uh, graphs and match them to uh, uh, together in an interesting way. Um, so I'd like to uh, sort of focus a little bit um, on some of the software I've I've uh, developed. Um, in particular, MATLAB BGL is a software package I wrote that takes uh, the Boost Graph library, which is a rich suite of graph algorithms and allows you to use all of those in MATLAB without doing any sort of data copying. So you can take a huge graph, if you can load it in MATLAB, you can sort of run these, these uh, particular al 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 algorithms on it. So I, I, I released this back in 2006 or something like that, and it's been downloaded, I think, seven or 8,000 times since then. In particular, I checked last night and it's been down, 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 downloaded about 450 times in the last month. So people seem to really like that that uh, packet, and I get feedback on it all, 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 all the uh, time, and I must confess the occasional bug, too. So <laughs> they do creep in there, even when I try and be careful to uh, uh, avoid them. Um, so one of the other things I like to highlight is that all of the software for the pictures uh, and uh, tools I'm going to talk about is, is, is available on my website. Um, as a grad student, we're, we're, we're sometimes asked to look at particular papers and then re-implement these, these uh, ideas. And 
most of the time this goes smoothly, but occasionally you'll find a paper where it, you know, it seems like they're missing a detail here, 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 and there. Um, and I've decided that, you know, I really ought to uh, try and respect my fellow grad students, and if they ever have to work, work with this uh, stuff, there are fully fledged releases out there, so everything's out there, and all the details are hopefully encoded in there. If they're missing, then I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> okay, so let's get, start, get started on sensitivity. So, the first question you probably have is, which sensitivity are we go, going to uh, look at? Now, if you're one of the people who got the slides, you probably already know the answer to this question <laughs> uh, because you undoubtedly read ahead. But what I'd like to uh, say is when I started, start, started looking at this problem with, with uh, Gene, we sort of took a look at the uh, literature and said that people understand a lot of what has to do with sensitivity to the uh, links in the graph. If you add a link in page rank, you always increase the rank of that page, for instance, or the, the, the page rank value of that page. So, and, 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 and people looked at what, what you might want to do if you want to collude with others and try and increase your page rank. There's all sorts of interesting literature out there on uh, link farms and thing, things uh, like that. Uh, so another thing you might say is, okay, well there, there, there was this jump vector I had talked about. Well, in terms of the people that looked at that from uh, the very start of research on pay, 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 page rank, including, uh, well, I'll get to, to you on that in a second. But the jump vector it actually turns out to be extremely important, and you can really customize the behavior of page rank with this jump, jump up, uh, 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 vector. Um, it turns out that a lot of the clustering ideas I talked about before are related to a particular choice of that jump jump uh, vector, where you just pick a single page and always have the surfer return back to that page, which is a model that's so special. It's actually called personalized page page uh, rank. Um, and it turns out you can do all sorts of other things with the jump uh, vector too, including some spam work or spam identification work that Professor Garcia Molina work, work worked on. So people really sort of understood and took, 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 took advantage of the fact that if you change this jump back in interesting ways, you can do really interesting things with a page rank. Um, sensitivity to this parameter alpha didn't appear to be quite as well understood when I started. Um, so this is something Gene, Gene, Gene was really interested in, so we sort of started with that one. Um, and I don't, well here, let me just uh, motivate a little bit about what happens when you change the value of alpha. What I've got here is I've taken the graph of Wikipedia. So Wikipedia is a graph you can just get and download off the, the uh, internet. They have a great data access pol policy, so this is really easy to uh, do. And then you can extract all of the links from Wikipedia. And then this is sort of, you, you can think of this as a pretty big subset of the web. So in 2009, when I got this, in March, uh, Wikipedia had something like 7 million pages and roughly 70 million links. So it's not a huge page rank problem by the standard of 1 trillion page, page, pages or something, but it's, it's a reasonably sized problem, so you get some interesting things. Uh, and what we find is that when alpha is equal to 1 half uh, or 0 0.5, this means that you're sort of following one link and then doing something random. In this case, random is just jumping to a page on Wikipedia completely at random. If you can actually know uh, Wikipedia, they've got the randomized button on the side. So you can actually <laughs> simulate this process in Wikipedia itself. What you see is that a very reasonable uh, topic is up on top there, the, the uh, United States. Uh, the category of living people, so the C prefix means uh, category, uh, is the uh, second page there. And we see France, Germany, England, the United Kingdom, Canada, Japan, Pol, 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 Poland, and Australia. Now you might quibble over the order of some of these countries depending on your particular nationality, uh, and I would certainly be, be uh, in favor of that. However, I think we can say that countries appear to be what's important in Wikipedia at this particular value of alpha. If you change alpha a little bit, you increase it to 0 0.85. 0 0.85 is a particular value of alpha that's often regarded as the val val value of alpha because it's used most often in experiments. 
And what we find here is that the United States is still still on top, but we actually get these uh, contents, these 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 other categories sort of showing up out of the blue here, and. What some of these pages are is main topic classification. So the, ca the category of main topic cl classification is one of the root category pages that sort of identifies how information on Wikipedia is hierarchically organized in some, some odd sense. We get a page on the contents. Living people gets bumped down. The, the United Kingdom gets bumped up above France in this particular one. They, they might be happy about that. Uh, but then increase alpha to 0.99. What we find is that the category pages take over completely, um, and the country is almost entirely pushed off this uh, list. Uh, so you actually get a fair bit of different behavior with, uh, with, with alpha in this uh, particular graph. So we wanted to understand this, and the first way we sort of looked at this was taking a look at the <coughs> function of alpha. So what you can do is make explicit the dependence of the page rank vector on the per parameter alpha, and then look at what you can do with that new uh, model. So the first thing you might think of doing is looking at its uh, derivative. And indeed, Jean and Hen had worked on this uh, way back in 2004, I believe. Uh, so what did I do about this? Well, Jean and I spent some time uh, looking at this, and with uh, Hen too, um, and we identified a way of computing this derivative with just Page, page rank solved. So if you can solve the page rank problem, you can compute the derivative of this vector with uh, respect to, to uh, alpha. Sort of a cool, cool, cool little uh, feature there. And what we also did was we sort of said, okay, well we can compute this der derivative. Can we use that to predict if a page is going to change rank when you change this val value of alpha? We looked at that too, and it, it actually wasn't as successful as I was hoping for that particular task. It's, it's, it's moderately successful, but I was sort of hoping for a, 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 a little bit more about that. Or, 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 around the same time, um, uh, people were also looking at the same uh, 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 function of alpha. It's, it's one of those things that Gene used to, to uh, say. It was sort of in the air around the particular time. So everyone was looking at this uh, particular topic. Um, and what you can show is that this vector sort of becomes more sensitive as alpha goes 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 to uh, one. So as people are constantly clicking on the graph and not resetting very often, a lot of things uh, start changing rapidly. That said, there's actually a well-defined page rank vector at the parameter one. So at alpha is equal to one, if you know a little bit about linear algebra, you'll recognize that this linear system actually goes singular here, uh, which would mean that there are multiple solutions of it in general. It turns out that if you take the limit as alpha goes to a one, that's a, per a perfectly well-defined uh, 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 quantity. So what I'd like you to sort of take away from this is that alpha matters. What value you pick determines a lot of things. And you can look at the derivative as some sort of a sensitivity measure, but it's sort of, it, it ends up being uh, proportional, sort of largely proportional to pay, page rank and there's something lacking here. I, I, you know, what what should you pick as alpha? Is the question I have at the end of this. And hold on to that question for one uh, uh, moment. So. Talk about that random site I uh, had had uh, mentioned. The bulk of what I'm going to talk about in the, the uh, presentation. Then, question: What is the first thing you might do is have what do people use in literature? Well, if you go back and read. Print in page in 1998, they said alpha is equal to 0.85. Uh, in 2007, Martin Jork did, did a study where he looked at PageRank um, and studied whether or not it actually helped out a web search engine. Uh, the particular value of PageRank or of alpha for PageRank he used was 0.85, um, and he ended up determining that PageRank was not useful in his particular case. In particular, you could use a metric like in degree of a page, which is trivial to compute. Uh, and that ended up outperforming pay, pay, pay drink in this particular example. In 2006, there's a professor, Nellie Litvak, who looked at the same problem and said, okay, well, let, 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 let's all look at this as follows. That alpha is equal to zero, we know what we're going to get. This ends up just being your jump vector, that is your pay, pay, pay drink vector at alpha is equal to uh, zero. Um, and then they were able to uh, show that at alpha is equal to one, you get something you really don't want. 
In particular, if you actually took alpha to be one on the web, the page yahoo.com uh, would have page, page, page rank zero. It would have no uh, importance at all. Uh, so that's probably not a good thing. I guess I'd like to uh, regard Yahoo as a fairly important page. And their argument is a little bit more nuanced than uh, this, but they said, look, at alpha is equal to zero, we know we don't want that. And alpha is equal to one, we know we don't want that. <laughs> we want to be in the middle. Uh, so you get alpha is equal to zero to a 0 0.5. Um, as I'll show in a little bit, uh, you can do do uh, some experimentation and get alpha is equal to 0 0.375. Uh, now, people who work on pay, pay, pay rank algorithms, um, of which I guess I am one, <laughs> tend to look at values of alpha bigger than 0 0.85 because it turns out that alpha is equal to 0 0.85. Pay rank is actually sort of an easy problem. Um, so there's not necessarily that much you can do from an algorithmic point of view, sort of in general on the problem. Now, uh, I'd like you to remember that random surfer model I talked about at the beginning. So the random surfer model said that with probability alpha, you follow a, or you, you, you follow a link on the web, and with probability 1 minus alpha, you do something else. So I claim that for each and every individual of you out there, and, and, and uh, myself included, this value is clear. I could write a Firefox extension or Internet Explorer if people still use that, uh, <laughs> and track what, how often I click on a page versus doing something else. And sure, my value might vary a little bit depending on what you know, you know what time of day, how busy I am, and things and and things like that. But I would sort of claim that over you know months or weeks, you would be able to compute a value of alpha for yourself. Now, the problem with this is that Google wants to use PageRank for everyone. So in theory, PageRank was supposed to be this random surfer model that looked at the behavior of all these different surfers on, on the uh, web and sort of looked at the pages that were most important. And so when you pursue this argument a little bit further, what you can sort of say is that, okay, well, let, let's suppose that there's some distribution out there that models all of our values of alpha. And when I am born, I pick a value out of this di <laughs> distribution, um, and that value is set for, for um, my uh, life. So what would the value that Google would use, or what value would Google then uh, use, sort of, we view as this one? Well, I think the most, one of the natural things for Google to use might be the expectation. So we sort of average over everyone out there and say, okay, people on average browse, browse out like this. So they would take everyone and aggregate them into this big uber surfer here that follows links with, pay, with, with probability alpha and goes off into never, never land with probability one uh, minus alpha. So what, what, what they'll do or they might want to do is compute page rank of the expected value of A. Now, I'm a pretty selfish person, maybe. Uh, and I might say, you know, Google ought to compute a page rank vector for just me. And I suspect there might be some other people in the room that would have a similar feeling. And then instead of taking uh, this Uber surfer, you say, I want them to average all of our individual paid, 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 paid rank vectors. So you can envision that Google has to compute a page rank vector for each of us uh, and then take the average of those. So this is taking the expectation of the page rank vectors as these random variables. And page rank, as it turns out, is a nonlinear function. So in general, these two quantities are not going to be quite the same thing. And so this would be uh, what I would consider a small oversight in page, page rank model. It doesn't sort of take into consideration that there actually might be multiple people out there, and they might browse the web a little bit differently. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to spend the rest of our time looking at the random alpha page rank value, or wrapper, if you like cool <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to move to a warmer part of the room. I'm going to hold it here. Hopefully it'll be warm. <laughs> so what, 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 what we're going to do is we're going to look the page rank of a page, not as a scalar quantity, which is the probability of following a link on a page, but as an actual random variable. So we're going to take the page page rank vector and look at it as a vector of this random variable. Well, that seems a little bit difficult, and that's, 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 that's not a random quantity. And the first thing we're, we're going, go, going to do is actually look at its expectation standard d, d, 
deviation. Um, so this is sort of what I'll talk about for most of the rest of the talk. So uh, let's go on from there. Paul and I, uh, just uh, to acknowledge Paul here, Paul and I originally looked at this uh, in a pre pre preliminary paper in 2007. OK, um, so you probably have two questions at this point. One is, well, what the heck is this model really? And the other one is, uh, David, you just said picking alpha alone was hard. How are you going to pick a random variable for these things instead? So the first thing I'll say, uh, which is addressed in the next slide, actually, is that we actually can measure this from uh, uh, data, which I'll get to in a moment. But the first thing, I, but what, what I'll say before that is, we're going to model these values, or these, these, these distributions A, as beta distributions. The beta distribution is a very nice distribution that encodes all of these probability density functions here. It has two shape parameters, A, A and B, which controls how it looks, and then it has an, a left and a right endpoint uh, parameter as well. So here we see a beta distribution that sort of has two uh, spikes at either end point, which corresponds with uh, negative shape per parameters up here. We can concentrate all of the parameters. So what, sorry, I, I should explain a little bit about what this uh, means. What this means is that people will tend to pick val values of alpha sort of proportional to, to, to the uh, height of this, this uh, curve curve by here. So this means that the values are actually sort of concentrated around 0 0.9. And the mean of this distribution actually falls right about here to 0, 0 0.85. So you can sort of think of this as one way of looking at that original 0 0.85 val value of alpha. You can get a completely uniform distribution um, of alpha 2. So this means that people just pick values between, I think, 0 0.7 and 0, and 0 0.9. So that would be the left and the right endpoint. And you can sort of shape it or slope it a little bit. So you can have a lot of flexibility with this uh, beta de uh, distribution here. As I said, we can actually measure this from uh, data. So after we gave this talk uh, at a conference, uh, some people from Microsoft got back to uh, me. Uh, also, so one of the things we said at that conference was, you know, people can actually measure this, uh, and the search engine companies out, out there ought to uh, at least look at this. Um, and some people from Microsoft got back to, to uh, us with some information that, that allows us to look at this, this uh, density. And what we find, uh, first of all, so let me explain what, what we're uh, looking at here. The histogram is a histogram of all the values of alpha that they, they uh, sent us. And what, what, what we can see is the most frequently occurring value of alpha that they sent us was, zero, was uh, 0 0.5. Now, the way they collected this data happens to bias it towards integer multiples. So 0 0.5 happens to be about a half. So we actually get some spikes around like 0 0.5, like a third, and I think it's a fourth, and a couple other integer uh, 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 multiples there. So that's sort of the raw uh, data. We did a density fit to, to uh, this, which gives you this dashed line in the back here. And then if so then, then uh, we did a non-linear uh, least squares fit to, uh, to the uh, de 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 density to uh, get the blue beta distribution here. And I adjusted the parameters a little bit. It was actually like 1.503 or something like that. But I just drew a 1.5, 0 0.5 beta over the entire uh, real line between 0, zero and 1. And I, I mean, I think that's, that's, that, that, that sort of looks like a beta. I mean, I think we have a little bit of val, 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 validation. I can maybe quibble a little bit that we could model this as a, better as a sum of betas, but sort of as a first approximation that looks uh, reasonable. Uh, just to give you some sense of how much data this is, this is a million browsing sessions that Microsoft collected over a two hour period from their toolbar. So Microsoft has this toolbar that people can opt into when they're browsing around the uh, web, um, and it tracks behavior on what you're doing for the purposes of helping out Microsoft and what its uh, goals, 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 goals are. So in two hours, they collected a million different people brow 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 browsing the web, and this is what you get by uh, viewing uh, that million sort of traces. And what I want to say about this is that the mean here I plotted, the zero, 0 0.33 uh, 75 is actually the mean of both the beta and the actual uh, data. So at least the uh, means of those, those uh, two things match. 
Okay, so what does it actually look like in practice? Well, as I said, um, if we take a graph, our page rank, so if this is the graph we've seen throughout the, most of the talk, our page rank values are now random variables. And I plotted the density of the page rank values, or of these page rank random variables for each of the pages on this six, six uh, node, node uh, graph. So here's node six, there's node three over there, or up on top. And the circle stems are the page rank values themselves. So if you had just taken page rank and run it on the expected value of this distribution instead of doing our fancy random model, you would have gotten the circle stems. And the star stems are the means of the page rank random var variables themselves. So you go through and look at the expected value of, pay of uh, pay page rank. So you, you find out a couple things from this uh, plot. One of which is that the expected value that you get out of a random model and the page, page rank, sorry, the, 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 the other way, expected value of what you get out of a random model and the actual page rank of the expected value are not terribly different. Um, however, there's this other information here, which is the width of this, this uh, curve, which sort of says where you expect these page, page, page rank values to be, sort of these random uh, Variable. So I, I think there's some extra information here. We can look at the sort of widths, widths of these things by looking at the variance or standard de deviation of these distributions. Okay, so what, 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 what we're going to do in the future is sort of look at those sta sta standard deviations and see what we get by looking at them. But first of all, I figured we ought to do a little bit of theory and look at what actually changes in this model of page rank, or actually I might want to say what stays, stays, stays the yeah, same, because you can write down a lot of these same properties for page rank too. Okay, so what changes? Uh, well, we're going to look at page rank of this, these uh, random variables with a beta density here. And you can show that uh, the expected value is always bigger than zero, and you can interpret it as a probability uh, distribution. So just like page rank was uh, sort of the probability of finding the surfer at any page on the web, we can do uh, the same thing with our expected val value of page rank here. Another point is page rank has this really nice interpretation in terms of the probability of a surfer following L clicks on the uh, web. So this is what's modeled by this P to the L times uh, V. And we can sort of get a similar interpretation out of our random alpha page rank uh, 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 model for for our our case, so we get sort of a weight on these length length l paths. And three, you might be wondering, well, is there any case where this stuff doesn't matter at all? Well, it turns out if a page has no in links, then you're not getting any additional modeling flexibility from this particular way way of looking at things. However, this perhaps isn't all that useful, or it may not be all that useful in practice, because if you don't have, well, when you do this correction from dangling nodes back to the jump vector v, you almost always give every single person on the web an in-link, at least one, which sort of means that this one probably may or may not be that, that useful. It might be useful in looking at more specific versions of uh, the, pa the, the patron jump vector v. Um, so just as we saw page rank on Wikipedia, we can also look at what page rank tells us uh, at, at, at what this, this uh, model of page rank tells us. So here the, the distribution of A I'm using, or the distribution of these random variables, is the one we measured from data, so it's a beta 1.5, 0 0.5. And if we look at the expected value of the page rank random variables on Wikipedia, what we find is a very similar uh, structure to what 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 we saw initially. Turns out there's a couple of slight differences. I think the United Kingdom got boosted up a couple spots, um, but we can then look at its standard deviation here and gain sort of some sense of which pages might be changing the uh, most under this uh, distribution. And what you see is a lot of the pages that pop up are similar to the ones that changed in rank when we went uh, and looked at the value uh, and and sort of looked at that. Higher val 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 value at 0 0.85. Okay, so one oh yes. Can go back one? Yes. So if if I were making my own web page, would 
knowing that information help? Excellent question, first of all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me come back to that again. Thank you. Uh, that, that sort of is an interesting side uh, topic that I don't think we have time to explore right this info. Uh, so as, as long as I'm back here, one thing I wanted to uh, say here is that you might be concerned to see that the United States is sort of at the top of both of these uh, lists. So it's both sort of the most sensitive page and it's the highest pay, pay, pay rank uh, value. And you see France and the United Kingdom are also sort of up, up there too. So one thing we wanted to look at was, well, are we really getting anything more out of the sensitivity than highly sensitive or pay, pages with high pay rank are, sens are uh, sensitive? So what we did is we looked at this sort of metric under two, uh, well, we'll look at it under two uh, different cases here. If you look at my thesis, there's a table of about probably like 18 or 20 different things we uh, look at about this. Um, and we'll look at these on an actual web graph. So this is a crawl of the of some uh, domains in the, the United Kingdom from 2006. That's part of a spam ranking challenge, ch challenge that I'll get to um, a little bit uh, later. It's got set, set 77 million nodes in that graph and around 2 uh, billion edges. And the first thing, Pew, or, or one of the common things that people look at when they're comparing rankings is Kendall's Tau. So Ken Kendall's Tau sort of, sort, sort of measures how many swaps you have to make between rankings to make them the uh, same. It ends up being a number between minus one and one, where one is the two uh, ranks are ordered completely, completely identically, one is they're backwards from each other, and zero is sort of they don't really have a whole lot to do, to, uh, do with each other. So the first thing we see is that when we compare uh, the Kendall's tau between page rank of the expected value here. So we're not we're not actually comparing our ex expectation. We're uh, comparing just page rank itself to our standard deviation for our first beta distribution here. We get a value of about 0.3. If we do it with our second distribution here, we get a value of minus one. And we do a sort of a crazy comparison. Um, we get a value of minus point, point, point oh 0.02. So these would sort of say that maybe this one's getting a little bit of the information that's, that's, that's similar to a pay, 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 pay drink, but, but maybe not. Now, one thing I will say about Kendall's Tau is that people don't like it because it doesn't really distinguish between a swap between position one and a million and a swap between position one and two, um, which is sort of a big problem with it. Uh, it, it sort of compensates in, in, in other ways, but another me measure we found at comparing these things in literature is what I've been calling the intersection similarity metric. Um, and what this is, what the intersection similarity between two uh, ranked lists, it's the sort of running average of the number of different things you see in the uh, list. And you look at this at every single position in the uh, list. So you, so you sort of get a very position sensitive metric for how much reordering re there is or how much new uh, New, there the number of new pages you're getting. Obviously, if you're not getting any new uh, pages at all, then you'll get a value of zero. So that's where the two uh, lists are are identical. And if you get a value of one, that means you're getting uh, entire, in, entirely new information, or it's a completely different ranked uh, 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 list. So what 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 we've done? We plotted these across all 77 million positions in this uh, list. And what, and what you can see is that they sort of hover around 0.3 to point, or 0.2 to 0.4 between all, all of these until we get to about, uh, I think about 10 million pages here or so where everything starts, starts uh, getting mixed up. So we actually get new information across a wide variety of values here. Okay, so that's that's uh, good. Let me briefly spend a few moments talking about how we compute these these uh, things. Um, so the simplest way of computing these, these uh, things is just to do a Monte Carlo approximation. That's a very straightforward four, four, four thing to do. All you have to be able to do uh, is generate a, a sample from your beta di distribution and uh, compute a, pay, a page rank back. So, Nice and straight for forward to implement that one. Uh, there's another technique we can do that we've called path, path uh, damping, 
where you take that model for this vector in length L pass and actually turn that into an algorithm. So you, you, you literally compute the, this uh, quantity here and form, 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 form th this uh, sum. So this, uh, so this is another nice way of computing these uh, things. And one problem with this way is that when you look at how you have to compute the standard deviation, which is one of these things that I, I think we're really interested here in here, uh, you end up it, it, it ends up becoming very expensive in this one. So it's not sort of a nice, simple, so I, 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 sh I should say Monte Carlo, it's really easy to get the, uh, uh, the standard deviation, whereas in this one, it's not quite so straightforward for, for, for what you should do. This, there's, there's, there's another approach, um, which is Gaussian quadrature, where you just say, okay, look, this is an integral here. We can just form a quadrature approximation of this, this uh, integral, and all we have to do is pick a couple values of alpha, very special va values of alpha called the Gauss points. Um, turns out Gauss looked at everything back in his uh, day. Uh, and just weight a sum of those. So these are sort of the ways we're going to look at this. In our initial paper, we looked at another approach. Um, and if you want to see, it's called the po po polynomial ca chaos expansion. If you want to see why that's sort of equivalent to what, actually it's almost identically equivalent to what we're, we're uh, looking at in three, come back here next uh, Monday at 1.30 and Paul Constantine will tell us more about that one. How do these me uh, measures do in time? Well, the quad quadrature approach sort of sits between what you get with the Monte Carlo and path damping approach, but the path damping approach doesn't give you the standard deviation the way I've computed it here. So this one's sort of cheating and sort of a lower bound on what you might want to uh, do. Uh, Monte Carlo doesn't really give you any acceleration beyond the standard sort of 1 over square root of n convergence that you get with that one. And we, we were actually able to analyze the convergent theory of all, 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 all of these uh, methods. Uh, effectively, all of them converge. And if you want to see a plot, a backup slide on that one uh, showing this, uh, what we find here is, let's see, what's the interesting thing here? Ah, that's what it was. So Gaussian quadrature converges with the right endpoint to the 2n. And when you see this, you say, hmm, but David, you've been looking at some distributions where, where the right endpoint is actually 1, in which case it wouldn't seem that that convergence bound gives you anything. <laughs> that's true. This convergence bound doesn't give us anything in this case. It turns out that it's a much more complicated bound, you can say, that does allow you to show that those, those uh, ones can, 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 can converge too. Um, again, the fastest one here would probably be path damping, because all, 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 all you have to do is just do matrix vector products and you get really fast convergence with that one. Um, I can see I'm running out of time here, so in the closing minutes, I will talk about an application of this to web spam identification. So it turns out that the host of this UK 2006 graph that we had, we had looked at where, 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 where the standard deviation was different than the paid, paid, paid rank that are labeled as spam, non-spam, and others. Um, and there was a competition formed around this to sort of use this as a sample graph for how people can use the links on web pages to identify whether or not a page might be a spam page. This is a page that's just filled with sort of useless links. So they took a whole bunch of hosts from, from uh, this graph and identified them by human judgments under these uh, 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 measures. And in a paper by Pichetti et al., what they did is they looked at all sorts of different measures over the web, including trust rank, uh, truncated page rank, page rank, um, and some really fancy uh, sort of number of paths between pages estimates. Um, and they got a baseline score on these uh, things. So this is what we get out of this uh, paper here. And what these uh, numbers are is precision, recall, an F measure, a false positive, and a false negative. Precision uh, for for the classifier, that, or for the an estimate of the performance of the classifier that that they they uh, build. Precision is let me hope I get this right now. Uh, the number of pages you identify uh, that you I sorry the number of pages you identify as spam that are correct. Recall is the number of pages you uh, sort of identify spam out of everything that might be uh, spam. The F measure is just the G geometric mean of these two, and sort of a nice aggregate performance measure. 
Um, the false positive and false negative ratios are how many pa pages you sort of screw up in either way. And what, 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 what we find is when we add features based on uh, this wrapper idea to their classifier, we actually increase the performance of the classifier. It's a moderate increase. I don't want to sell this as a compelling application that says we're going to solve web spam or anything <laughs> like that. But if you've been tracking the Netflix uh, prize, maybe something, <laughs> sometimes all you need is just a little bit more. So the Netflix prize is to predict how people rate, rank on movies. And you win a million bucks if you get to a 10% improvement. And it seems that they've been asymptoting at like a 9.98 or something like that. So, you know, maybe if we can throw this in there, yeah, who knows? But there does appear to be extra information here. Um, and sort of with that, I'm going to uh, skip the, the inner outer stuff because I believe I'm already up time. And a quick uh, summary. So the first thing we saw is that alpha matters. Um, the next thing we saw is that sensitivity is just <laughs> is, uh, useful. Uh, what the algorithms we use both for, for the derivative and for the Gaussian quadrature are just pay, 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 pay rank algorithms. And the inner outer method in one sentence is that you can solve page rank using itself. So the conclusion after that, <laughs> everything is just page rank in the world, it seems. Um, here's a quick summary of our contributions. Uh, we looked at the derivative, we looked at this wrapper model. Uh, we didn't get around to looking at this inner outer iteration. I apologize for, for uh, that, but uh, I've done a little, a, a, a little bit of work on that. Um, I'd like to thank my committee for being here. Uh, thank you all by name. Thank you, pro, pro, Professor uh, Garcia Mo, Molina Greif, Professor Owen, Professor Sabiri in the back, and a very special thanks to Professor Michael Saunders. Um, I would like to extend a very, very special thanks to uh, Gene. Gene got me really interested uh, in all these problems initially after sort of my uh, work at Yahoo and Intel and was just a, a phenomenal uh, advisor and exposed me to all sorts of interesting pro pro problems and ways of looking at things. And, very much indebted to uh, him. Where is that, David? Uh, that is at Blenheim Palace. So when we when uh, we were in England, uh, he and I took a day trip over to Blenheim Palace, and I happened to catch him in a rare smiling mood out of the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, there's a long list of people that I feel I must thank uh, in the course of my P P P PhD career. Um, I hope you'll allow me the. Uh, well, I, I'm 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 not going to list everyone individually, <laughs> except for uh, my parents and Laura. You guys have been phenomenal. Uh, so I I I just like to send a very very, very special thank you to uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> So now is the time for questions from the floor, not from the committee necessarily, but um, everybody else, here's your chance to ask a question. So David, I was wondering, could you have, could you do individual sensitivities by giving someone, for example, you want to you wanna become a, a web surfer and you could give them a little test on something about the Bird of Paradise dance that would, they would, that how they would navigate the web, and so then you could have a, you know, maybe one of several iter uh, iterations or paradigms that, that would then link them into the web so it would follow their style rather than being grouped together as random servers. Yes, that, that is an excellent idea. Um, it turns out that there was a study out of Microsoft Research uh, last year, the year before, that sort of looked at the ways that people browse the uh, web and sort of identified that there's two two uh, behaviors that you get in browsing the uh, web, one of which is a navigator and the other of which is an explorer. And I can honestly never remember which one is which, uh, but the two behaviors are sort of, one of the two clicks on web pages repeatedly and sort of does a deep, deep, deep uh, search on a particular topic. And the other uh, type sort of continually comes back and goes back and forth around p p uh, pages and does Sort of a much well, shallower search, search yeah. uh, but not 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 so deep. So yes, excellent question. Um, I believe that Laura also had a, a question 
er, 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 in the talk, which, if my memory serves, was could you use these sensitivity measures to inform sort of a local site being arranged? And I think that that's actually a really compelling use of some of these ideas. Um, so one of the issues with this model is that a lot of times you don't know per perhaps precise statistics on how people browse around the web in general, but you may know that about a particular site. So one way of using these uh, 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 sensitivities is first you could validate whether or not the random surfer model was working well or not on your site, and if you validated that as working reasonably well, you could sort of perhaps use these to inform how changes in your own linking structure might influence where people end up on your, your uh, particular site. And turns out there's also uh, a couple of papers referenced in my thesis that sort of describe uh, not how you would use this in our particular case, but how you might incorporate some of this information in other cases. Paul Constantine. What would you say your next steps are for this work? Uh, excellent, excellent question. <laughs> that was not a plan, by the way. <laughs> we're, we're, just, uh, we're on the same wavelength. Um, so uh, one of the things that you might uh, criticize about a wrapper model is that it's actually fair, fairly expensive to uh, compute. Um, and that's true, and the only answer I've been able, well, there's a couple of different ways of, of uh, answering that, that uh, question. Um, one of which would be, does it matter? So in a real web search engine, you'd be able to ascertain how much accuracy you really needed uh, by looking at measures similar to, to uh, these F scores and sort of see, okay, if we compute it out to 12 digits or 383 uh, uh, digits, does that actually make a difference in practice? Um, however, if you wanted something faster in theory, there's a variant of Gaussian qua, qua, quadrature known as gauss turan qua, quadrature that actually allows you to combine both of the, 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 the ideas I talked about. So what you use in that one is you use the derivative vector at a particular point 